Hello YouTube. All right. Today we received another package. This one is from Stellarview. It is a uh, handmade uh, astrograph. It's the SBQ100. And uh, we're about ready to unbox this and uh, take a look at it. We'll be right back. The uh, big box down there, we had another smaller box and it was packaged in there and uh, came in uh, plastic wrap. So we're about ready to open this up and see what we got here. See if I can do it here with one hand. It's a very nice case. <clears throat> Airline sized. In case you want to take it around the world with you. So we'll go ahead and zip this here. Let's take a look here. Let's see if shipping company was good to us. Okay, it's a very nice padded case on the inside. <clears throat> Has your manual for your SVQ. Now, this is an imaging, a dedicated imaging astrograph. You can get a diagonal for it if you want to do some viewing uh, with just a eyepiece, but uh, it's supposed to have a very flat field and made for uh, imaging with your astronomical cameras. So inside we have the uh, the scope itself and uh, looks like it comes mounted uh, pre-mounted on a lost Mandy plate so um, and I think there's a few other accessories so I'll go ahead and get this out of the box and uh, get it on the table here and we'll take a closer look be right back okay got it all out of the box and this comes with a uh, just a really big meaty three inch focuser on this is the feather touch which is your uh, upgraded focuser on these and uh, this focuser will take a full frame camera which makes it really nice for astrophotography no vignetting and uh, a couple of adapters here and then uh, right down to your uh, final which all these three are three different pieces so you've got a piece here here and here and it looks like you might even have a third piece or a fourth piece I can't really do it with one hand but um, get the entire focuser will rotate here which is nice and uh, you've got a coarse focus on it and then of course your feather touches for your fine comes with some uh, nice big uh, really meaty uh, mounting rings um, does come with a lost Mandy plate which is really nice and some risers that keeps the whole telescope you know off your mount so that you can rotate your equipment back here depending on how close you have to get uh, and with your with your focus and uh, if you have a filter wheel back here or uh, if you have a you know larger camera uh, you won't be hitting uh, you know the plate with it with it uh, with it raised up like that so in the front uh, this got the a locking uh, dew shield here we run this back grab my other hand here just go ahead and push this back Got a very solid feel to the slide on that, and uh, got the uh, writing on the front there. Identify what it is. This is not a threaded cover, but uh, you have your apochromatic uh, uh, glass there. Now there's four elements in this, so you have your normal triplet. And then the fourth one for your field flattening. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can't find some uh, specs on this for the uh, shrill rating for the uh, glass. And uh, be right back. Okay, I wasn't able to um, find a shrill ratio on this. I actually forgot this is actually a uh, four element. It's not a triplet. So with that, uh, you don't get as quite as high of the shrill ratio as you would with a visual scope uh, but it's got an extremely uh, extremely flat field with a really good color uh, correction on, on this I was able to find uh, some of the specs here though this was uh, 616 and 17 today's date by the way is the 22nd of June of 17 and uh, I don't know if we can see some of this where it was inspected before it left the factory so this is serial number 226 so I imagine this is the 
226th um, uh, item or uh, telescope that they produced. I assume that's how it's done. And uh, did uh, find where they did the interferometer uh, test. I hope I said that correctly. Trill's not there. And then um, they did uh, all their other testing with the laser uh, and so forth. Make sure everything is uh, collimated. So <clears throat> that looks uh, really good. So we have uh, this is a uh, 100 millimeter f 5.8, so 580 millimeters of focal length. It does use the O'Hara FL FPL 53 glass, and uh, like I said before, this has a really heavy duty three inch focuser on it, um, which will hold you know some a really really heavy astro camera on this. Now this comes with 42 and 48 millimeter oversized T-rings uh, and you, they are direct thread so you can get your camera you know threaded directly directly on the back here so you're not just putting it in and then tightening a, uh, a few nuts uh, to hold it in and to really hold it you know if they're screwed straight in uh, always the best way. So the resolution uh, of this scope is 2.28 arc seconds per pixel on a full framed chip 1.92 arc seconds on an APS chip and the tube diameter by the way this thing is pretty big it is uh, four and a half uh, inches in uh, for the tube itself and 5.5 if you um, if you go up to the dew shield up here uh, and uh, overall it's 19.2 inches long with the dew shield retracted and uh, even with the focuser in, deal shield extended, uh, they come out at uh, 23.75 extended. Again, it does come on uh, pre-mounted on some risers and uh, some uh, a lost Mandy plate here. And uh, it's going to come in right about uh, 13 pounds. So um, anyway, everything looks uh, real good on it, real happy uh, with the way it was packaged. Uh, see if we can turn this around for you a little bit, give you a little better idea of what we're looking at here. If I can uh, do it without knocking it off the counter. That would always be nice. So we'll slide this around here one-handed. And here's the view from the other side. And there we have it. So can't wait to get this uh, out into the observatory. I'm going to be uh, using this as a triple mount. So I've already got a C8 and a uh, a double stacked um, solar scope out there, a Cor uh, Coronado uh, solar scope. So uh, we're going to go ahead and mount this on top of my new CGXL mount that just came in. It's supposed to hold 75 pounds, so we're going to definitely test it out with uh, using the C8 in the center and then using this as a wide field imaging scope. Um, on the uh, on one side, and then the Solar Max uh, Coronado Solar Max on the other side for um, for some daytime solar imaging. The idea is obviously to have everything on one mount, so that way, if I want to go out at night or during the day, um, everything should be polar aligned and star aligned. So that pretty much concludes uh, my first opening and unboxing here of the SVQ100. Can't wait to uh, give it a try. So um, stay tuned. And if you haven't joined my channel yet, please do so. Take care.